Well, hello, and welcome back to a story and a song. This is a special story for April the 23rd. I'm St George. Yes, tomorrow it'll be St George's Day. Maybe you'll be listening to this on St George's Day. And today I'm going to tell you the story of St George. But before that, we're going to have a song. I'm sure you'll know it. This is very easy. It says Jesus' love is very wonderful. So high and you've got to reach up high, you can't get over it. So low and you've got to reach down low, you can't get under it. So wide and you've got to reach out wide, you can't get round it. Oh, wonderful love. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful, Jesus' love is very wonderful, Jesus' love is very wonderful, oh, wonderful love. So high you can't get over it, so low you can't get under it, so wide you can't get right. story of St George's Day as if I was St George himself and hopefully we can enjoy that together. Now I know I should have set it up earlier but I'm just trying to set up my uh, story a little bit so as we can look it through. I hope you like my tabard. Made this for going to a rugby match on St George's Day and uh, had a helmet and some soldiers gloves as well whoa there we go so let's share a prayer together and then we'll tell the story of St George and we'll tell you why he celebrated on the 23rd of April let's pray Lord we thank you for the lovely days around us we thank you for the safety of our homes we pray for the safety of our nation that at this time you would bless us and as we celebrate St George teach us a little bit about who he was and what he did. Amen. So St George, well this is my story. The day we celebrate is not the day I was born, it was the day I, St George, died. I was born in AD 270. My mum and dad were believers they believed in Jesus and I came from a place called Cappadocia. Here's a map. There's Cappadocia. Yep, it's near to the Mediterranean Sea where people go on holiday. Now, sadly, when I was a young boy, my dad died. And so mum went to live just near to Syria. She lived in Palestine down here. And that's where I was brought up. I was brought up on the stories of Jesus about 250 years after Jesus had lived and died. When I was 17, as a young man, 
I joined the army. I became a cavalry officer. I rode on a horse and I was very, very brave. Went in many battles and as a result of that, as a young man, I was promoted. My rank was tribune. A tribune today would be like a colonel in the army, so it's quite a high officer. I didn't just have a platoon under my control like a captain or a corporal. No, I had a whole army that I uh, looked after. And the place they sent me was a place called Nicomedia. Now, if I was born in Cappadocia, well, Nicomedia, that's over here. And there was where I served. But there was a problem. The emperor, he didn't believe in Jesus. He wasn't a Christian. His name was Diocletian. He became the emperor in 283 years after Jesus. AD 283. Well, I was just a young person at the time. But he was still the emperor when I joined the army. And so I was fighting for the Emperor. Of course you've all heard the story of George and the Dragon. Well, there's the Dragon! Ah! Look out! He's a Welsh Dragon, this one. <laughs> now, the Bible does mention things a bit like dragons. It calls them Behemoth and Leviathan. I'll tell you how they tell the story. It's not quite how it really went. Once, when I was on patrol, Near to a village, there was a dragon that was terrorising the village. Well, they saw me coming through, and as a Roman soldier, they asked that I would protect them. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Protect them from this dragon. What they had done is they'd taken a young princess from the village, and they tied her to a stake outside the village so that the dragon would come and eat her instead of attacking the village they'd drawn the names by lot and it was the princess that had been sent out to be eaten by the dragon not very nice well when i heard about this i rode out with my lance and with my sword and i went to fight the dragon shoulders back out i go the dragon was on his way already. Now the thing you have to understand about dragons is though they've got lots of scales on the outside they have a very soft underbelly like a crocodile and so if you want to fight a dragon you've got to get underneath. Well the dragon came out it made my horse look very small but we rode out together and as it reared up to gobble up the girl I struck with my lance underneath its scaly armour. Down went the dragon, knocked me off my horse, we rolled about together, I drew the sword and thrust it underneath into his belly. Well, down went the dragon. I rescued the princess. I was a hero. That's the story that they tell. It's not quite how it happened. The dragon, that was really the emperor. You see, the emperor did believe in Jesus. He believed in the old gods, the gods of Pan and Mars and Jupiter and Saturn. He wanted to follow these gods and he got very, very afraid of anybody that didn't follow his gods. He had a second in command, a man called Galerius. And Galerius believed that the emperor, that the Christians, were plotting to kill the emperor and to kill Galerius and so he asked for permission to burn churches and to burn their books. Well, I was the commander in Nicomedia. When the emperor's edict, the emperor's command came out telling me that in my town Nicomedia I was meant to burn the churches down and I was meant to destroy the holy books I said no. Indeed, the Emperor sent a small <coughs> platoon of soldiers <coughs> to carry out the uh, order and I stopped them. I said in this town Christians are loyal to the Emperor. We do what the Emperor says, we follow him. I said I too am a Christian. 
but I will be loyal to the emperor. Well, they went back and reported it to Galerius. What happened next wasn't good. I had an army at my command, but Galerius, he had a bigger army at his command. He sent the army out to invade. They came across the sea, at the straits there, the Bosporus, and they surrounded the town. I had a choice. I could fight with my soldiers and become a rebel against the Emperor, or I myself could surrender and my soldiers could go free. At St George, that's what I did. I went out to the Emperor's army, and when it came to fight against me, instead of cause a war, I asked for peace. I took off my gloves, I threw them at the Emperor's feet, and I lay there. I said to the Emperor, Emperor, I have followed Jesus since I was a young man at my mother's breast. She brought me up to believe in him, and I will not turn away from him now. But I am a loyal soldier, you know how I have fought for you. No, the Emperor didn't want to hear it. He put me in prison. He tortured me. But through that time I would not turn away from my Lord Jesus. Finally, on this day, the 23rd of April, 303, they took me out to put me to death. And so St George, he died as a martyr for his faith. He took off his cloak, he laid it down. In the Bible, the dragon is called the devil. And that old devil was there in the face of the emperor, Diocletian, when I had to fight against him. But I fought not with a sword, but for the Prince of Peace. Well, that's the story today. It's the story of St. George. He's the patron saint of England and of Russia and a fisherman. Interesting person. Let's say a prayer to close. Lord, we thank you for those who have followed you before we did. We thank you for their bravery in times of trouble. Give us bravery in our trouble. And we pray that you would send us on the adventures you want us to go on. Amen. Have a great day. This has been a story and a song from King's Church, Penwitham. I'm Pastor Kevin Jones. <laughs>